our karma and our destiny and what's the difference and why why if I've never done anything bad do bad things happen to me well remember I began by saying that we've got a very clear picture of what's good wealth success health achievement but the universe the universe has no such labels to the universe it's all good cuz everything that's happening is taking us a step farther to our awareness and to our awakening that's that's what's good to the universe it's not that the universe says you've been very good you're going to get something good in exchange we've kind of convoluted karma and santa claus that that you know Santa Claus knows if you've been good or if you've been bad and if you've been good you're going to get a tree full of you know presents and if you've been bad you get nothing and that we we've really confused this very very deep and complex and powerful law of nature with our very simplistic sense of rewards and punishments And this is why I began with the question of why we're here. If we recognize that why we're here is to wake up, why we're here is to experience the truth of ourself, then everything that helps us do that is good. Everything that is conducive to our awakening is good. Everything that takes us out of this false identification with the body is good. This is why the scriptures are full of stories of people devotees who suffer and suffer and suffer. Whether Job or Kunti and everyone in between. Doesn't matter what religion we're looking at, but all of the world scriptures are full of stories. of good people devoted people pious people who suffer and they suffer the message of their suffering is that through the suffering it brings them closer to god that that's the teaching when things are going very well we tend to forget god we tend to remember god when things aren't going so well when something happens this tends to be the time we call out to god so really the path is to realize that what we're getting we're getting to help us wake up and that which makes it good or bad is only how we take it if we learn the lesson in it it's taken us a step farther it's therefore good that doesn't mean it was pleasant that doesn't mean we enjoyed it it doesn't mean it felt good but it means in the global concept of goodness it was good because it took us closer to our destination took us closer to our truth and when we don't learn the lesson what we find is that the universe is relentless cuz that's the goal wake up and if you don't get it this way all right give it to a different way and i'm going to keep giving it to you until you get the lesson it's like a good teacher you've got a kindergarten class you start doing arithmetic you teach it one way the child doesn't get it Now if you're not a good teacher and you don't have patience, you're going to ignore that student and just move on only with the students who get it or maybe maybe you'd even slap the student's wrists or you'd berate the student. But a good teacher is going to say, "All right, you didn't get it this way. How about that way? Doesn't work with pennies, maybe it works with blocks. 
Maybe it works with apples. And the teacher is going to keep trying different, different ways to help you understand. Once you get it, then you move to the next lesson. But until you get it, that good teacher is not going to relent. It's their responsibility to make sure that you walk out of their classroom knowing your arithmetic. And the reason that we've taken this human birth is to know who we are. And we're going to keep coming back and coming back and coming back until we get it. And we're going to keep having the experiences over and over and over again until we get it. And so when we say, why do bad things happen to me if I haven't done anything bad to someone else, that's that's really just looking at it too simplistically. If things that are painful are happening to us, instead of feeling like, oh my God, what did I do? I'm being punished. Ask ourselves a different question. What am I supposed to learn from this? How am I supposed to grow from this? How is this experience yet another layer of the onion of myself that just keeps getting unpeeled and unpeeled and unpeeled? And if you find that you're constantly in a situation that doesn't feel good, as in the question that's bad, well, ask yourself, what seeds are you planting? Again, not good or bad. But, you know, we talk in here a lot about apple trees and peach trees and apple seeds and peach seeds. It's sort of a common theme. And what I always say is, if you've got an apple tree today, you can be pretty sure that at some point in your life you planted an apple seed. Doesn't mean it's good, doesn't mean it's bad, just means it's the law of karma. And if something is happening in our lives today, we can be pretty sure that we planted the seeds for it in the past. But again, what's important to remember is it's not punishment. It's not reward. It's not punishment. It's not good. It's not bad. Like an apple tree is neither good nor bad. It's just there. It's neither better nor worse than a peach tree. It's just there. But if in our lives we want different trees, we have to plant different seeds. And that's, that brings us into this difference between karma and destiny. The karma are the acts that we do. And the acts that we do reap fruit. Every seed you plant is going to bear some fruit. Again, it's not simplistic, it's not rewards and punishments, it's just a law of nature. Whatever I plant, that's what's going to grow. That's what my garden is going to be full of. Our destiny is what we get based on the karma that we've done. So the fact that you are here right now is your destiny. Nobody waved a magic wand and zapped you all here. From different, different corners of the earth, you engaged in different thoughts, different acts. Those acts bore fruit. That fruit led you to something else. And there's, there's a series. There's an element of grace in it, of course. You don't get here without grace. But the example that Pooja Swamiji always gives about that, which I love, is he says, you know, you can turn on the tap and have the water flow. And you can have your bucket to fill it up with water. But if your bucket's upside down, water's flowing, bucket's there, but you're not benefiting. 
and in our lives. The grace is there, the grace is flowing, equally available for everyone. But we've, we've got to make sure that our bucket is facing the right direction. We've got to make sure our bucket is in proper alignment. We just had, two nights ago, we had a very, very sacred full moon. And the full moon always reminds me of one of, one of my favorite teachings about life and grace and karma, which is, you know, we look at the full moon. And when we see the moon, it looks so beautiful and we say things like, oh, the moon is, is so bright, the moon is so beautiful, the moon guides home the sailors, the moon saves the people lost in the jungles. But the truth is that the moon actually doesn't have any light. The moon is actually just a piece of rock held in the atmosphere by gravity very similar to so many other pieces of rock in the atmosphere. The only thing that makes the moon special is the alignment between it and the sun and the earth, due to which it is able to reflect the light of the sun onto the earth. That is what makes it special. When we see the moon, it's not the moon's light, it's the sun's light. It's just that the moon is reflecting the light of the sun onto us. And when the moon is full, it's not that it's changed shape or is now brighter. It's just in better alignment. There's no such thing as a half moon. The moon doesn't grow and shrink and grow and shrink. The moon is the same size. What happens is it comes in and out of alignment in its orbit between the earth and the sun. And I love, I love that teaching because that's really what it's about in our lives. When we think about our destiny, you think, well, I, I mean, we, all, we all want to be bright lights. Whatever for us that, that means. We want to be bright lights. We want to live in the light. We want our lives to be full of light. And the light is there. The sun is always there. The sun is always shining. It's dark now here, but that's because it's light for our family in California. When it's light for us, it's night for them. Sun is always on. But the moon, moon goes in and out, in and out of alignment and rotates, rotates on its axis. And as that happens, as it rotates, as we rotate, the light becomes more and less. The moon looks fuller and less full. And in our lives, when we feel half, or a quarter, or, a, or lightless, what we would call a new moon, a lightless moon, a moonless night, to just ask ourselves, not where did the light go, not I've been forsaken, not I need a new yoga teacher, or a new mantra, or a new course, or a new temple, or a new guru, but to just ask ourselves, how did I get out of alignment? And how can I get back in alignment? I know the light's there, I've experienced it. How can I get, how can I get back in alignment so that I can be a reflection of that light? And that's that's ultimately what we're all here for. But we're creating our destiny minute by minute and moment by moment. And that's in our hands. And that's, that's what our, our spiritual practice teaches us, is to, to really create or co-create with, with the universe, with grace, our present and our future. There was a 
a great saying that I saw outside of a, a church in the United States. Out the, in the U.S., the churches always have these big signs in their lawns, and they're always wonderful. Sometimes they're very, very Christian, but sometimes they're very, very universal. And this one was very universal. The sign said, watch your thoughts and you will see the future. Watch your thoughts and you will see the future. And that's the power that we have. It's really the power that we have. Not just, I think it, it happens. It's not this very simplistic, superficial kind of new age spirituality that takes us back almost to, you know, bewitched. I'll just think about it and rub my nose and then it'll happen. But if it's where my thought is, if it's where my mind is, if it's where my intention is, then it's where my action is. Then those are the seeds that I'm planting. And then that's, that's the trees that are growing in my life. And that's the fruit I'll have. And that's then my future. So we're, we're planting our own destiny.